Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt Chapter 1 My father and mother should have stayed in New York, where they met and married, and where I was born. Instead, they returned to Ireland when I was four, my brother Malachi three, the twins Oliver and Eugene barely one, and my sister Margaret dead and gone. When I look back on my childhood, I wonder how I survived at all. It was, of course, a miserable childhood. The happy childhood is hardly worth your while. Worse than the ordinary miserable childhood is the miserable Irish childhood, and worse yet is the miserable Irish Catholic childhood. People everywhere brag and whimper about the woes of their early years, but nothing can compare with the Irish version, the poverty, the shiftless, loquacious, alcoholic father, the pious, defeated mother moaning by the fire, pompous priests bullying schoolmasters, the English and the terrible things they did to us for 800 long years. Above all, we were wet. Out in the Atlantic Ocean, great sheets of rain gathered to drift slowly up the River Shannon and settle forever in Limerick. The rain dampened the city from the Feast of Circumcision to the New Year's Eve. It created a cacophony of hacking coughs, bronchial rattles, asthmatic wheezes, consumptive croaks. It turned noses into fountains, lungs into bacterial sponges. It provoked cures galore. To ease the catara, you boiled onions in milk blackened with pepper. For the congested passages, you made a paste of boiled flour and nettles, wrapped it in a rag, and slapped it sizzling on the chest. From October to April, the walls of Limerick glistened with the damp. Clothes never dried. Tweed and woolen coats housed living things, sometimes sprouted mysterious vegetations. In pubs, steam rose from damp bodies and garments to be inhaled with cigarette and pipe smoke laced with the stale fumes of spilled stout and whiskey and tinged with the odor of piss wafting in from the outdoor jakes, where many a man puked up his week's wages. The rain drove us into the church, our refuge, our strength, our only dry place. At Mass, Benediction, Novenas, we huddled in great damp clumps, dozing through priest drone, while steam rose again from our clothes to mingle with the sweetness of incense, flowers, and candles. Limerick gained a reputation for piety, but we knew it was only the rain. My father, Malachi McCourt, was born on a farm in Tomb County, Antrim. Like his father before, he grew up wild, in trouble with the English or the Irish or both. He fought with the old IRA, and for some desperate act, he wound up a fugitive with a price on his head. When I was a child, I would look at my father, the thinning hair, the collapsing teeth, and wonder why anyone would give money for a head like that. When I was 13, my father's mother told me a secret. As a wee lad, your poor father was dropped on his head. It was an accident. He was never the same after, and you must remember that people dropped on their heads can be a bit peculiar. Because of the price on the head he had been dropped on, he had to be spirited out of Ireland via cargo ship from Galway. In New York, with prohibition in full swing, he thought he had died and gone to hell for his sins. Then he discovered speakeasies, and he rejoiced. After wandering and drinking in America and England, he yearned for peace in his declining years. He returned to Belfast, which erupted all around him. He said, a pox on all their houses, and chatted with the ladies of Andersontown. They tempted him with delicacies, but he waved them away and drank his tea. He no longer smoked or touched alcohol, so what was the use? It was time to go, and he died in the Royal Victoria Hospital. My mother, the former Angela Sheehan, grew up in a limerick slum with her mother, two brothers, Thomas and Patrick, and a sister, Agnes. She never saw her father, who had run off to Australia weeks before.